Today I am releasing the first full financial audit of the Queens Library in over two decades. As part of today's announcement, I'm also releasing the first report from my new research and investigation unit. This unit is comprised of lawyers and data and analysis with extensive background in financial, criminal, and public corruption. And I got to tell you, these two documents tell a cautionary tale of what happens when no one is providing oversight and accountability. For years, the former CEO of the Queens Borough Public Library, Tom Galanti, and his executive team used the library as their personal piggy bank. Today, that era is coming to a definitive close. The proof of how backwards this organization had become is in the numbers. If you look at the chart, from 20, 2008 to 2013, Galante and his senior staff raised their own executive compensation by 7%. Meanwhile, they were chopping the operating hours of Queens Library branches by an average of four hours per week. And as they were scaling back access to books, the internet, and vital programs and services, they were lining their own pockets. In just the past three years, Galante spent more than $260,000 on prohibited items, including hundreds, I mean hundreds, of suspicious restaurant and liquor bills totaling $76,000, $22,000 worth of furniture for his office, and a personal smoking deck, nearly $2,000 for Maroon 5 concert tickets, two tickets to Disneyland, and satellite radio for the drive home. Former COO and interim CEO Bridget Quinn Carey also made a number of prohibited purchases totaling more than $48,000, including $11,500 for food and booze, 70 gift cards, and 22 charges worth $4,000 with no explanation at all. They were also, there were also potentially fraudulent expenses from Galante. And these include multiple fuel charges, sometimes within minutes of each other, raising the possibility that he was filling other people's gas tank as well. Liquor bills at a casino listed as business meetings. Now, unfortunately, this news is not surprising given the secrecy and deception that has gone on at the public library in Queens for over two decades. So in a nutshell, I just wanna sort of rehash how we got here. In 1997, the controller's office at that time approved a deal barring future controllers from auditing any library books, except for two funds that the library claimed contained city money. Now what happened next was a shell game. Under Galante, the library charged nearly all operating expenses to an internal city fund that ran up million dollar deficits. It enabled Galante and company to go to the city council and plead poverty, demanding more and more money. But meanwhile, he and his team actually had funds in other library accounts, some hidden from oversight. They were running surpluses of more than $25 million. It was clear that something was wrong. And to find out what that was, we went to court last year to pry open all the accounts run by the library. The board wouldn't let us do our work. And it wasn't until Galante was fired this past December, coupled with Borough President Melinda Katz's push for reform that resulted in important legislation from Senator Gennaris, Assemblymember Aubrey, it was signed into law by the governor that finally, and I do mean finally, gave me access to the files. And then we went all in. And here's what we found. When Galante wasn't feasting on New York City taxpayer dollars, he also managed to bill a Long Island school district for hours of consulting on the same days he claimed to be working for the library. In fact, on one business trip for the Queens Library in 2012, Galante went to Barcelona for 11 days and build Elmont Union Free School District for 65 hours of work over 10 of those days. On top of all this, Galante repeatedly failed to disclose business interests 
in his filings for New York City background checks. And he only fessed up when he learned that he was under investigation. So when you add it all up, Galanti's record is shameful. And it's a true injustice to the people of Queens that these abuses were allowed to go on for so long. As I mentioned, our audit investigation also focused on the library's former COO and its current interim CEO, Ms. Quinn Carey. Her financial conduct raises serious questions as to whether she should remain in a leadership position with the library. And the current board must decide whether she can effectively lead the organization going forward. Now on a positive note, I'm pleased to say that the revamped board has implemented proposals put forward by Borough President Katz and myself to put controls on credit cards and travel expenses. However, it is clear that much more must be done. Libraries are a critical part of our city's educational and civic fabric. They must be guarded and protected like any other public resource. With Mr. Galante now gone and new policies in place, it is my hope that the Queens Library System will once again take its place as one of the nascent premier urban library systems for the benefit of all the people of Queens. When you think about the library as a centerpiece of our communities, when you think about the library giving access to our seniors and giving dreams to our children, the fact that this library system was plundered for years by people who were more concerned about their own personal bottom line than the bottom line of the taxpayers of the city and the people they're sworn to serve.